Welcome to Variant. We love comics even more than you guys are going to love our first five year celebration giveaway. Today we're talking about a lesser known DC character, but one who's not going to stay that way for long, because back in mid-May the CW gave us our first look for his upcoming new live action series. Yes, I'm referring to Black Lightning. But first, we're kicking off our five year anniversary give back to you guys with round one of awesome prizes. And for this week's giveaway, we've partnered once again with the good people over at Sideshow Collectibles for three awesome prizes. For today's giveaway, the third place winner will get this awesome Hot Toys exclusive six scale Joker Batman imposter figure, which is based on the Suicide Squad Joker. The second place winner will be getting the Hot Toys six scale Ultron Mark I figure from Avengers Age of Ultron. And finally, the grand prize winner will get this freaking glorious six scale Return of the Jedi Darth Vader by Sideshow Collectibles. Sweet baby Jesus in a manger, I want all of these for myself, but they're not for me, they're for you. So to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is go to variantcomics.com forward slash giveaways between today, July 13th and Monday, July 17th to submit all of your information in the giveaway entry form. We'll then be picking and contacting the winners on Tuesday, July 18th, so make sure to include as much information as possible so we are definitely able to get in touch with you if you're one of the winners. I do also have to add that because of international shipping issues, we unfortunately have to limit this giveaway to the United States, Canada, and Mexico. So to our international variant community, you know we love you, and we'll definitely make it up to you in the future. Anyway, I've put all the info for today's giveaway in the description below, including a link to variantcomics.com where you could enter to win some sideshow glory. So get to entering and happy hunting. With that covered, let's talk some Black Lightning. As I mentioned, the CW will be airing a live action series for Black Lightning sometime later this year or early 2018. But I'm sure his origin and history in the live action series is going to differ a bit from that of his comic book source material. So before we get to the series, let's bring you up to speed with his comic book history, starting with his origin. First thing you need to know right off the bat is that Black Lightning's history isn't as elaborate or extensive as that of a character like Flash or Green Arrow. In fact, he's pretty much a C or D-list DC superhero up until this point. But the character first appeared in Black Lightning issue 1 in April of 1977. He was created by Tony Isabella and Trevor Von Eden. What's pretty awesome about Black Lightning is that while he's not the first black superhero, he is the first black superhero at DC Comics to have his own solo series. So he helped pave the way for characters like Jon Stewart and Cyborg, who are now two of DC's most popular characters. Now you may remember a while ago that we had a WTF segment on a crazy DC character that almost made it to print called the Black Bomber. In short, the character was a white racist who turns into a black superhero when placed under extreme stress. Fortunately, the character never made it onto the page after the editor who approved the Black Bomber left the company. Tony Isabella was then asked to salvage the character somehow. But Tony was just like, I'm not listening to you, you're crazy. So instead he convinced the editors to use one of his own ideas for another character, which as you may have guessed was Black Lightning. And they clearly loved the idea because before you knew it, Black Lightning made his debut in Black Lightning issue one. But the series was short lived and only lasted 12 issues. But going back to the Black Bomber for a second, Dwayne McDuffie actually made a callback to the character in 2008's Justice League comic with a character called the Brown Bomber. It was basically just a test to see how ridiculous the character would have been. In his take, the Brown Bomber was an overweight white guy who would turn into a fit black guy when he said the magic words, black power. Again, it wasn't meant to be serious. Dwayne McDuffie was actually a black comic book writer himself. He was just making fun of how absurd and racist the concept was. After his series was cancelled, he made a bunch of guest appearances in other comic titles. Including, but definitely not limited to, several issues of the world's finest comics. He then appeared in Detective Comics and even the Justice League of America title, where the League invited him to join, but he was all like, no thanks. In 1983, Black Lightning would join the Outsiders, which was a team led by Batman. Then in 1995, Black Lightning got another solo series, but that too was short-lived and only lasted an issue longer than his first solo series. Ending with issue 13. However, in 2009, Black Lightning got a six-issue year one miniseries that was received very well. Which leads us to the New 52, where Black Lightning was revamped and paired with Blue Devil. He was also briefly seen as a possible recruit for the Justice League in the New 52, seen on the left hand side of the page under Black Canary. Now let's take a look at Black Lightning's origin story, specifically his modern age origin told at Black Lightning Year One, 
because that's the most relevant one. The story follows Jefferson Pierce, who was just a normal guy who grew up on the South Side with big dreams of becoming successful. And successful he was as he became an Olympic gold medalist in the decathlon while in college. After graduating, he moved to Metropolis with his wife. The main reason they moved is because of the death of his father, renowned journalist Alvin Pierce. He was killed after attempting to go public with the scams of a local con man named Tobias Whale. Jeff had been the principal at several schools and became widely respected for all the good he was doing in the neighborhoods and schools. Because of this, the Wayne Education Trust, good old Bruce Wayne, gives him a grant to come back to the South Side to try to clean things up. When Jeff accepts the offer and returns, he sees how bad it has become mainly because of the Gang the 100 and Tobias Whale, and he decides to do something using his hidden electric powers. You see, Peter Gamby, a family friend in Taylor, taught Jefferson when he was young how to suppress his inborn metahuman abilities, so that he wouldn't accidentally hurt any of the people he loved, although his wife would discover he had these powers while he was having a nightmare, and his powers accidentally went off a bit while he was next to her in bed. So, I guess nobody's perfect. But it was the same family friend Gamby who told Jeff that he should now use his powers to help restore his old neighborhood, and he shows him to a plaque that said, just like lightning should ever appear to some men hope, to other men, fear. After showing Jeff the plaque, Peter says, evil people killed your father. They nearly killed this community. I'm not sure I care how you do it, Jefferson, but they all deserve justice. And that was basically enough to make Jeff be like, okay, fine, I'm gonna become a superhero. But that decision became justified when a student Jefferson became close with, Earl Clifford, was killed. Something that sent Jeff over the edge. So that mixed with a solid quote and a motivational old man were all the ingredients needed for Jeff to become a superhero. And he did so with the support of his wife and family, which is refreshing to see as far as superhero origins go. Peter Gamby, who helped inspire him, even made him a costume. Then as Black Lightning, Jefferson takes down the 100 and Tobias Whale with the help of Superman. Which leads us to how Black Lightning joined the Outsiders. But first, let's thank the people who made today's episode possible. When you buy a domain name from Domain.com, you get the power to influence and control what people find when they search for you online. No domain extension will help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. Domain.com is affordable, reliable, and easy to use. And the guys at Domain.com give variants an awesome offer. Get 15% off Domain.com's already affordable domain names and web hosting when you use the coupon code variant at checkout. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. So after the cancellation of his own series, Black Lightning lost his electrical powers. But that didn't stop him from fighting without them. The loss of his powers turned out to be psychosomatic due to the accidental death of a female bystander named Trina Shelton during a fight between Black Lightning and some gun-wielding thugs. But Batman, wanting to recruit Black Lightning to rescue Lucius Fox, helped him regain his powers, which eventually led to him joining Batman's Outsiders. In fact, Jeff is actually one of the founding members of the Outsiders, along with Batman, Geoforce, Halo, Katana, and Metamorpho. Black Lightning was later invited to join the Justice League during the Satellite Years, and initially turns down the offer, but joins a new version of the League later on, fighting alongside Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Red Tornado, Flash, Vixen, Green Lantern, Red Arrow, and Black Canary. In the New 52, there's not much to say about Black Lightning other than what I said earlier in the episode, which is that he was partnered with Blue Devil and that he was a possible recruit for the Justice League. And as for Black Lightning appearing in DC Rebirth, I don't think he's made an appearance as of the date of this episode. I could be wrong, but I don't remember seeing him. But now it's time for powers and abilities, friends. He's most known for electrokinesis, meaning he can control and manipulate electricity. He can easily stun or even kill people with this power. And as time goes on, his power becomes more and more powerful. He also has bioelectricity manipulation, meaning Black Lightning can manipulate bioelectrical currents that exist within all aspects of the body through the nervous system, heart, and muscles. So he can quite literally make your heart stop or shut down your nervous system if you wanted to. That ability alone makes him incredibly deadly, but he could also absorb and project electricity from his body. He could basically shoot lightning bolts from his hands like Zeus or something. He could also use electricity to transport through power lines or even bolts of lightning. By charging his lower body with electric energy, he is also able to fly at the speed of light. Yes, he can actually move at the speed of light, which is just insane. Additionally, he has the ability to heal people by absorbing electrons and using them to stimulate molecules and renew damaged cells. Black Lightning can also manipulate matter on a telekinetic scale with the use of electromagnetism. And he actually has way more powers and abilities, but in short, he's a highly underrated superhero, especially from a power standpoint. But even though he is underrated, he has appeared briefly in other forms of media besides comic books, like the Young Justice series, the Superman Batman Public Enemies animated movie, Justice League Crisis on Two Earths, and so on. But you know I can't end a history of episode without some reading recommendations. So read Black Lightning's original 1977 solo series, his 1995 solo series, Black Lightning's six issue year one miniseries, and DC Universe Presents Volume 3 Black Lightning and Blue Devil. 
First up for Wednesday, July 12th, we have Spider-Man 2 Issue 1. This is the sequel to the popular first Spider-Man miniseries, and it's definitely going to be fun to see what Miles Morales and Peter Parker are up to in this series. Now we have Weapon X Issue 5. The mysterious new director for the Reform Weapon X program has assessed the data from the latest adamantium cyborg attack, and the results look good. Next is Violent Love Issue 6. This is a series about Daisy Jane and Rock Bradley, two of the most notorious bank robbers in the American Southwest, who fall in love with one another. Here we have The Flash Issue 26. If you've been waiting to read an awesome reverse Flash storyline, this is it. And finally, we have Dark Days The Casting Issue 1. In this prelude to the DC Summer Event Medal, the Joker's surprise attack threatens to lay waste to all of Batman's carefully laid plans. And that'll do it, my friends. Remember that our first five-year anniversary giveaway is officially live, so head over to VariantComics.com and get entered to potentially win one of those Sideshow goodies. While you're there, you can join in on the discussion about today's episode, check out news and updates from around the world of geekdom, and even watch additional episodes. Links and info for all of the above are also in the description below. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.